What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? And this is the Wrestling Files with Mighty Q. And we're going to make you guys a champion. So today, before we get into anything, like always, a huge, huge, huge thank you to you guys because I didn't expect this at all. Um, I essentially went from like 40 subscribers on YouTube. I'm now well over 200. So that is a 500% increase, all thanks to you guys because you guys understand that it is a wrestling community. Um, it's a tight knit community. We're very close. Um, you know, we all go through pain. Wrestling is a tough sport. Um, so you've got to respect your, your teammates, your opponents. And I, I can't appreciate you guys. Um, any, any more. I mean, you guys just a huge thank you to you guys. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for all your help. It means a lot to me. Um, and like I said, seeing a 500% growth on my YouTube channel was absolutely incredible. You guys have absolutely been killing it on TikTok. Um, I think I'm basically on the verge of 10,000, uh, followers, which is just mind blowing. Um, so thank you so much. I, I can't say thank you enough um, because honestly, without you guys, I wouldn't be sitting here doing this. Um, I just want to be able to help deliver all the wrestling knowledge that I have in my head from my two wrestling coaches, Andre Metzger and Rick Delegata. I, I encourage you guys to look up those two guys and see their accolades and see what they've done because they're the reason that I have so much wrestling knowledge. Um, I, was, I, I was in the sport and, and wrestled for 14 years. I've been in the wrestling community for over 20 now. So all I, all I have is like a bunch of knowledge on wrestling and I feel it's a waste if I just contain it and I keep it and I don't deliver it to you guys. So this is a free platform. YouTube is a free platform. TikTok is a free platform. Some of this is going to end up on Rumble as well. Um, so I want to keep it free. Um, always just let's keep it that way. Um, I'm going to have some outside sponsors and stuff to where like I'll be able to make money and that way I can keep making more of these videos and I can help more of you and we can keep down that path and making everything as free as possible because the more knowledge that you guys have, the better wrestlers you can be. And then also from that, I don't want this to just be like a strictly wrestling thing because I want to make sure that you're good wrestlers on and off the mat. So a lot of these lessons that I'm going to be teaching you guys and a lot of the things that I'm going to be delivering are both, yes, good things for the mat, but then you have to take those same lessons that you did with wrestling and you have to be able to apply those in your everyday life. So that way, if you decide to go to college, if you're not going to go to college when you're working your job, when you're with your family, whatever that needs to be, I want you to be phenomenal wrestlers on and off the mat. And that is that that's key because we're only going to wrestle for so long. You can only do the sport for so long, but we all live life every single day. And the more that you can take, you know, the world that is the outside purview of sports and wrestling and combine that into the world that we live every single day, the better off you're going to be. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys honestly don't understand, um, how grateful I am for all of you. So, so thank you. I, I appreciate it so much. Um, continue. If you can tell three to five of your teammates, tell some other people who aren't even in wrestling that could use these lessons that, you know, could just get some benefit out of it. Um, and we'll go from there. So today, I'm going to teach a lesson that I learned off of a book, and I encourage you guys to either read the book or listen to the audio book. Um, I did a combination of the both. I like started reading it, um, but then basically, I like I I drive a lot, so I just I I turned to the audio book. I listened to the audio book, and and that's the way that I did it. So the book is called Chop Wood and Carry Water, and it's a story of a guy who goes to Japan to become a samurai uh, archer, and I'm not one that understands the samurai culture, but the samurai and especially the samurai archers, like they are the most accurate of any archers that are out there. And the book, the reason it's called chop wood and carry water is because that's what his daily training is. So he's supposed to go out, he's, he's chopping wood and then he's carrying these buckets of water and it's like every single day. And the whole point of the story is there's little monotonous things that you do every single day that eventually over time, it's like, oh, that amassed to a lot. So it starts with, you know, when, you, when you're chopping with an ax, your hands are going to get, when you first start doing it, your hands are soft. And over time, you know, you, you first start off, you probably get a couple cuts, your hands get real rashed up, they, they get messed up, and then they callous. And then so your hands are tougher. 
and then the carrying water, you, you know, you've got these buckets of water and you don't really have the muscle and the hand grip and the shoulder strength to like carry and walk with this water. So you start out not, not as strong being able to carry the water. And then over time, you're able to carry the water um, and you just get stronger as, as you go on. But if you looked at it from the first day to the second day, your hands are just going to hurt and be sore and you're still not going to really be able to carry much water. So after 100 days, though, your hands are going to be calloused, your shoulders are going to be a lot stronger, your abs are going to be stronger, your hands are going to be stronger. And so it's about doing the monotonous tasks day after day after day after day after day after day. And then after, you know, 50 days, 100 days, 300 days, 1000 days, you look back and it's like, okay, well, where I was compared to when I first started is a light years difference, even though I'm doing the same everyday task. It's it's the changing that that happens over time. And as you continue to do the same task, you continue to get better at what you're doing. And, and that's how you keep going. Sorry, he's over here messing with this bed. I, I just got to give him that look every once in a while. So day by day is a thing. And so taking those same lessons from chop wood and carry water. Again, I encourage you guys to read the book or listen to the audio book. It has a, a litany of lessons that are inside of it that I can't even, I can't even speak to all of them. So you can take just chop wood, carry water, take that directly to wrestling. If you take wrestling and you work on it every single day. Now I'm not saying you need to spend 10 hours a day wrestling. If you take 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes every day. And it's like, all right, for five minutes, I'm just going to work on this one setup for five minutes. I'm going to work on my stand up. For five minutes, I'm going to work on my switch. For five minutes, you know, I'm going to work on breakdowns. For five minutes, I'm going to work on a double leg. If you did that every single day, your wrestling, it might not look better tomorrow. It might not really look that much better the next week. But after 10 weeks, after 30 weeks, after a year, your wrestling is going to be at such a higher level just because you do the same monotonous task every single day. It goes the same for lifting weights. If you go and did bicep curls one day and you look at yourself in the gym or you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, the next day after you get home from the gym, it's like your arms aren't automatically going to be bigger. But if you did bicep curls and you did workouts every day for like three weeks, you would start to see a difference. So the, the thing that I'm kind of getting to is it's like wrestling results aren't fast. Um, it's, it's a very slow process. And a lot of the times you can feel that you're making a lot of progress. And then you run into a buzzsaw who's been doing it for 10 times as long as you. And, you know, he absolutely walks through you and you think, oh, well now, now everything is lost. What, what am I supposed to do now? I thought I was getting better. And it's like, you get right, you know, brought ba basically you feel like you go back to square one. Well, that square one is now moved. So you said, all right, well, I'm going to work on my double leg and I'm working my double leg every day for five minutes, for five minutes a day. I'm going to make sure that I've got a perfect setup and I'm working this setup and that's how I'm getting to my double leg. I'm making sure that I got my hand, you know, so I'm shooting right foot. So right leg forward. Um, let's say, you know, you're working tap, tap, and then you're going arm drag, arm drag into the double. So let's say that that's what you're working. So you're like tap, tap, arm drag. And so if you're making sure on your double leg that I'm making sure to get a good penetration shot in, and I'm making sure that when I'm in on my double, that my heel at least starts in between his legs. And that way my toe, when I go heel, toe, knee, my penetration gets all the way through into him. My shoulder gets out into his hip. And when I'm taking my shot on the double, I'm making sure that my hand is in the back of the knee joint. And this hand is in that knee joint as well. So that way, when I windshield wiper cut the corner and I drive to like 132 o'clock, my hand is in the knee joint. I'm making sure that all these little things are, are perfect. So again, I'm going tap, tap, he reaches arm drag, that arm drag gets pulled across that hand goes into the knee joint. This foot has already made that step. And it's making that step on that arm drag. So it's tap, tap. He reaches arm drag step, heel toe, and it's a deep penetration step. So you step that heel right between the, the, the middle of where his feet are. You put your heel down, you put your toe, you drive in, you get that initial blowback, 
and then you make sure that your hand placement, you got your right hand in the back of his knee joint, your left hand in the back of the knee joint, you explode off your knee and you drive him to two o'clock and you make sure that all these little details are perfect and you're going to do that every single day for five minutes, 10 minutes a day, every single day for a year. You will be phenomenally efficient at shooting a double leg. And, and that's just the one move. You can hit that all day long. And you know what? People are going to see you hit that double leg, and they're going to try to stop you on the double leg. But if you keep working on it, and you keep getting even better at it, it's not going to matter that they know it's coming, because you're going to be so good that their defense isn't going to be able to stop you. You're going to be so efficient at doing the move that they're not going to be able to stop you. And that's the difference of, you know, everyone wants to go and they want to learn all these different moves. Well, if you take one or three moves and and just hone in and make it just absolutely unstoppable, you don't need to know a hundred different moves. If you know, I take this great double leg that you can't stop, and I have a tremendous half that you can't stop. Well, you know what? I'm going to take you down, and then I'm going to pin you, and you had no clue. I didn't need to know a chicken wing. I didn't need to know a cradle. I didn't need to know a hammer lock. I didn't need to know a ball and chain. I didn't need to know a crossfit. Like all these things that everyone talks about, it's like, yes, it is important to know a lot of moves to know, be able to counter. But the other thing that's, that's more important is how good are you at any of those moves? If you take a bottle of water and you pour it out, well, that water gets super spread out. If you're looking at it as like, okay, well, that water is really spread out. How, how effective is that water? Now, if all that water stays in the bottle, it's like, well, I'd probably say that this water bottle holding the water is a lot more efficient than the table is at holding water. Like the table can hold a lot more surface area. It's got a lot more surface area to be able to kind of like balance, but I have a full water bottle that I can then pick up and move the water. Can you pick up a table and move it? No. So everyone gets so like bogged down. It's like, Oh, well, I don't really know that many moves. It's like, well, how about you get really good at a handful of moves and just make it to where you're unstoppable. And that's where the chop wood and carry water situation. It's like, keep learning as many moves as possible. But also at the end of practice, like I'm not saying don't learn other takedowns, but you know what? Work on your double leg every day or work on your single leg every day, work on one shot every single day. And that be your go-to shot. That's it. Learn as much stuff as you can But know that you have one shot and it's your go-to shot. So for me, it was a double leg. So I just told you a great way to shoot a great double leg. I gave you uh, two setups to use and then the the way to correctly finish on a double leg. So you can go tap. The guy doesn't reach. You go tap again. He's going to reach. Hit an arm drag. Arm drag straight into the double. And the most important thing on the double is getting a good penetration step. And then from the penetration step, it's all about hand placement. You don't want your hand up by his hip because... My hip is way stronger and you're not going to be able to hold somebody. Now, if you're in somebody's knee joint, I can pull and your knee is going to bend. You don't have any, like, yes, there's muscles of your quad. So your quad muscle, you know, extend, it makes your leg go up. You have your hamstring that pulls your leg to you. But if you pull on somebody's knee, that's very effective at stopping somebody. It it makes it very hard for one, for them to sprawl. And two, what's going to happen a lot of times is you'll be in that knee joint and you'll start to drive and they're, they're, they like start to sprawl. And when you pull in that knee joint, it buckles and they automatically start going down. So you don't even have to really like drive and make this like beautiful finish to like this angle. It's like, no, just boop, little pull, drive. And there's already like a lot of momentum going there. So if you work that every single day and making sure you have perfect hand placement, you have a great setup, you have a deep penetration step, most people aren't going to be able to stop that shot. And so from there, we go, okay, I, I've worked my shot every day for the last three months. I've gotten really, really good at it. Now you can transition. You can go, okay, well, for example, I said half. Most people don't run a half the correct way. The half is the most efficient pinning combo and is the most used pinning combo across the all of wrestling, but people look at it and it's like, well, it's so basic. It's so easy to defend. Not if someone does it the correct way. If it's done the correct way, it is almost impossible to stop. And that goes to the same notion of someone who hits a perfect double leg. It's virtually impossible to stop that takedown. So do the same thing. Now you can combine this and mesh this together and say, all right, for seven minutes a day, I'm going to work on my double leg for three minutes and I'm going to work on a perfect half for four minutes and do it every single day, every single day. 
until you get to a point where it's unstoppable. And then you do it some more and you practice it some more. So it's a chop wood, carry water, and it's a day by day monotonous grind. After the second day, you're not probably going to see that many difference of results. But after 20 days, after 50 days, after 100 days, you see this massive change because it's the exponential graph. You know, you're kind of go, whoop, you know, the hockey stick. So it's like, okay, little, 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 whoa. And so it, it all happens in the same. It's like results are both fast and slow, but most people stop because it's so slow in the beginning that most people don't wait until it gets really fast. Like, yeah, you, you learn a lot of stuff, but it's like, okay, I'm learning all this stuff, but it's pretty surface level. So you're learning a lot of stuff, but you're not really getting any depth to it until you get some depth. That's when it goes up. It's like super tall trees, super tall trees have some of the deepest roots that go almost as far down as it does up and as expansive. So you have a giant tree that's a hundred feet tall. Well, the roots are going to go down pretty far and they're going to spread out a, a long ways because that tree has to stand super tall. It's got to withstand the wind. It's got to withstand storms. It's got to withstand all this stuff. And if it had some shallow roots and it had nothing, you would be able to have some strong winds and the tree would go Boo, and it would fall. And, and now what happens? You just took the strong tree that had no base and no footing and that's gone. Every single house that you live in, live in has a foundation. If you don't have a perfect, strong foundation, that's where you then have a house that can literally fall and crumble if you don't have a perfect foundation. You look at giant skyscrapers. You look at anything that's built with any size, and it has to have a perfect base underneath it. So focus on your base every single day. Keep building your base. Focus, 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 base, base, base. That's all that matters. If you have a perfect base, no one's going to be able to stop you. No one will stop you if you have a perfect stance, if you have perfect setups, if you have perfect technique when you execute a shot, if you have perfect technique on top when you're breaking somebody down, if you have perfect technique when you're trying to run a pinning combination, if you have perfect technique on bottom hitting an escape, no one is going to stop you. That's what it takes. Build an incredible base that is super deep and super expansive. If you want to make your base a thousand you know, we're just going to say like a thousand yards wide and then you go another thousand yards deep. Do you know how massive of a structure you can build on top of that? That's what it comes down to. And this lesson now exceeds beyond wrestling. If you want to be better at reading, read a little bit every single day. If you want to be better at math, do math every single day. You want to be better at running, run every single day. Whatever it is, do a little bit every single day over and over and over and over and over again. It's insanity when you think about it because insanity is doing the same thing over and over and getting the same result. But the thing is, what starts when you like when you first start doing something, you're going to have these massive mistakes. You're going to be over here and then 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 you're here and you're here and here 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 here. Uh-oh. Now you're in perfect motion in a straight line and no one's stopping you. So yeah, you might have these giant pendulum swings back and forth and 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 then all of it stops and you get in a perfect line. And that's exactly where you need to be. Everything lines up. Everything goes crazy. It's it's like a kid when they first learn to talk. When a kid first learns to talk, you can't understand what they're saying. They babble on all these words. They when they learn how to walk, you you kind of you kind of take a couple steps and you fall. And when they're even starting to stand up, you fall. And you need something to hold on to when you're first starting to walk and to first take your couple steps. And then no, now you're walking without holding on to something, but you're still falling until you develop. And now you're able to walk. And then you go from walking. Now you can run. And then from running, you can get better form with running and you can get faster and you get faster and you get faster. You get better technique and you get faster. It all works the same, but it takes little process day by day by day by day by day. So yeah, make massive mistakes. If you're making massive mistakes, that means that you're on the right track. If you're making massive mistakes, still making, and the thing is you can have little victories for yourself. So let's say you're working on a double leg. Let's say you're working on this setup where you're going tap tap, arm drag to the double leg. Let's say you get a tap and then the guy reaches and you automatically hit an arm drag. 
that's pretty good because sometimes people's reaction aren't ready for an arm drag. Sometimes they're not ready for that. Or let's say, you know, when the time that you're saying, all right, I'm going to do five double legs and you know, you got into the knee joint on that last one and you pulled it and his knee buckled. That's success. I did that one right. I know that I did that one right. That was it. That is success. If you do it right, now just replicate it. Do it to where it's muscle memory to where you don't even have to think about it. You're like, tap, tap, arm drag, boom, I'm already in the knee joint. His knee buckles, it pulled. I'm already swimming for the half when I'm taking him down because that's the next step. You start driving on the double leg and you finish and you're swimming for the half. And then by the time you get so good at it, you're, you're thinking about it and you're moving. You're, you got your motion going. You, you're kind of hitting him with a tap and a fake and a tap, a fake, tap, arm drag, finish. And you start going on the double. You swim for the half. You've got the half before he even hits the ground. You're already moving up. And now you're chest to chest. He hits the ground. You're in a perfect pinning combination. Boom. Hits the mat on his back. Pin. Over. State champ. Get your hand raised. That's what it takes. Little by little by little by little by little. And you're going to get there. Because again, it's massive mistakes, massive changes until you end up in a straight line. And the fastest Dis, or the shortest distance between point A and point B is a straight line. So at first, you're going to be kind of like over here, over here, over here, over here, boop, until you eventually get to a straight line, and that's what you're going to be. So take that, apply it to anything you want to use in, in your life. I, I'd say for wrestling, because that's the wrestling. this is the wrestling files, and that's where we are. So take that and do, do with it what you will. If you want to learn a double leg, perfect. I just gave you the tips of a perfect double leg. Um, if you want to do something, just pick something and do it every single day and do it again and do it again and do it again and again and again and again and again and again. So that's my message for today. If you have a chance, pick up Chop Wood, Carry Water. If you like audiobooks, I think they work just as good. Um, some people like listening. Some people, you know, I, I know sometimes with the way that page, either way. If you want to read it, read it. If you want to listen to it, listen to it. Either way, I think it's a tremendous book for kind of going through the monotony of what it's going to take and, and how that kind of feeling is because there's going to be a lot of days where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm only chopping wood and carrying water. How is this helping me? So definitely go get the book. Take a listen to it. Again, thank you guys so much. I hope that you guys are able to get... Um, a tremendous lesson out of this. And maybe this is the thing that you needed to hear. Um, and that's something that's going to spur you into whatever else that you need. Sometimes it's either on the mat or off the mat. I don't care what it is, but if you can take this message, like the video, comment below, share it with your friends, um, especially share it with your friends, because the more that we can spread this message, the more that we can get it out to people. And I think this is a message that is perfect for everybody. So please, please, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And of course, you know what? Smash the bell and get the notification bell on so that way you can know anytime a video goes live and I'm dropping new knowledge on you guys and that way you never miss a video. So again, like, comment, share, subscribe, get the bell on. But for us today, that, oh, actually, I forgot. Um, I'm also going to put in the description, uh, two links that have my merch on there. So if you guys want to get yourself like a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, um, some sweats, some, all, I got all different types of stuff on there. Um, go check it out. Give it a look. I'm not saying you, like you have to get something, but if you do, it supports me. I appreciate it. Um, but I'm, I'm like I said, I don't really care if you buy something or not. I'm just going to link it in there and that way you guys can check it out, not check it out. I don't care up to you guys do what you do with it to what you will, but Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough. Like I said, 500% from you guys increase is just absolutely incredible. I'm so grateful. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hope this message can help you today. Spread it with your friends. Like, comment, share, subscribe, bell on. That's it for the Wrestling Files today. And Mighty Q, I'm out on this one. Catch you guys the next time.